after we looked into the machine room of pyrolysis, we are now going to switch to chem cycle, uh, cycle um, life cycle analysis. Christian Krüger is going to present the results of the life cycle assessment and then we will hear of the three critical reviewers how they see the LCA themselves. Christian Krüger is specialist in terms of the life cycle assessment. He looks at LCS on camp cycle. He works with corporate sustainability and coordinates all the work around LCA. Christian, please mind the time too and the floor is yours. So the core of my presentation is the LCA study that we published. Uh, we put one and a half years of work in it to have it watertight and we showed full transparency because in July 2020 we published all of our results. Also the entire LCA report is available for everybody on the internet and we see a large interest from the different stakeholders. So the entire LCA expert report was published and it was downloaded more than 100 times already. And the focus of the study is chemical recycling, pyrolysis, and also the ecological effects of pyrolysis along the value adding change chain in Germany. But we also have to say that an LCA too cannot answer all the questions of chemical recycling and the BSF study only covers certain aspects. The study is very complex and so it is not easy to read and this is a downside of course and it shows how complex the subject is and how difficult it is to have it fully transparent and objective. Now maybe first of all in terms of orientation with the project chem cycling, as Lars Kistau already said, we are in the molecular loop. We call it molecular recycling. And that is also the focus of the study. We do not have a monomer or CO2 loop, no bionic cycles, but we looked at the entire picture and also included mechanical recycling, the polymer loop, as it is called. It is also part of the study. And this study consists of three independent partial studies which uh, look at the subject from different angles. The first study is from the point of view of the waste, the second from the point of view of the product characteristics, which is relevant for the customers, and the third, if uh, you compare with mechanical recycling, uh, focuses on the quality of the product. The study was uh, done by a third party, that was Sphera, which is one of the biggest LCA consultants existing. And we selected three reviewers which uh, who will present their point of view after my presentation. They come from different areas and have different um, points of expertise. And for the core aspects of LCA, we used high quality data coming from commercial makers as, for example, uh, sorting plants, but uh, sorting plants or also pyrolysis as such. And Plastic Energy also cooperates with us and delivered data. The basis of the pyrolysis data are those that are used in the commercial plant in Spain. So we have 70% material efficiency. We have almost no external energy which is needed. And after the pyrolysis procedure, before uh, the process enters to a chemical reactor in BSF, this tack oil is once more purified in an additional step so that we achieve NAFTA quality. The first study focuses from the point of view of waste management on the products as such. So, which means if I look at the CO2 emissions compared to incineration, can I save CO2 emissions? And, and if I say, or when I say incineration, I'm talking about waste incineration and about the SRF, a power plants in Germany. So if you look to the right and looking to Germany, 
we have the yellow bag so with the plastic refuse is collected there so we have a sorting plant and in the sorting plant some sorting processes take place so we have mixed waste we are not concentrating on mono fractions and the mixed waste can either be incinerated which is state-of-the-art technology today or it can be or, or pyrolysis can be used so if it is being incinerated you win steam and vapor and uh, electricity which delivers power plants so you get a voucher for it and if you use pyrolysis you produce a material and this material if it has nafta quality it can replace nafta original nafta in a plant so if you look to the right of this chart you see the two contributions the light green fractions are the incineration emissions of co2 from the direct incineration and the dark green are these um, energy substitution from electricity and steam so you have one ton of co2 e per ton of waste if you then know that or if you look at the pyrolysis and compare it with that you see process emissions because you also have material loss particularly during pyrolysis but you also get energy or uh, material substitution in terms of the nafta which can replace original nafta in the plants and if you look at it you see that chemical recycling has a clear advantage by one ton in pyrolysis compared to pyrolysis and if you then look at the quantities you can see a 50 percent of co2 emission reduction what's important is that we compared it with the waste incineration classical waste incineration which plays a, a big role here in germany the next study because there was a question that we were dealing with at the same time if i take a an oil and turn it into a new form of plastic which has to be compared to plastic which is made of crude oil and natural gas namely fossil fuels so what's the co2 balance there before we look at that let's take a short excursion to the mass balance approach of bsf why do we need that because if we have new circular plastics and feeding it into chemical plants they will mix with commercial feedstock and if you do that in large scale chemical plants at the beginning there is a dilution process taking place and then there is the mass balance approach or a chain of uh, delivery model where the input is added to certain uh, mass balanced products as the output and these additional products are also sold and then here the mass balance has to be correct because you can only buy what you also sell in terms of circular products and the advantage of the mass balance approach is that there is the same performance of the product which is an advantage for customers that can then use it as a plug-in for their plants what's important for mass balance approach is that there is a physical connection between the circular uh, feedstock and the end product and if that weren't like that it would be a different a delivery chain model supply chain model so we have the comparability between the input and the output product now looking at the limitations of the systems of the right side you see that nafta coming from a refinery coming from crude oil then fed into a chemical plant and made into a plastic which is then a commercial plastic and you use two steps here a steam cracker and a polymerization the reference plastic material is polyethylene pe and the value adding chain for chem cycling means that we have a pyrolysis oil which consists of mixed plastic weight waste and then is fed into the chemical verbund and from that chemical secondary plastics are made from chemical recycling and that's also PE.
Now, if you take a look at the right hand side, CO2 emissions, CO2 emissions amount to about 2000 kilograms per ton of plastic polyethylene for the fossil plastic material. Plastic produced of chemically recycled material shows high emissions, but if you look at pyrolysis, of course, you lose material because of CO2. This is the main contributor because of which you need more CO2. But looking at it from the holistic point of view, you use waste. We use waste that we took from the yellow bag in our model waste which normally is incinerated and if you take a closer look it turns out that you can avoid waste incineration and this will be credited so the dark green is the credit which shows that co2 emissions can be reduced significantly more than um, 2000 tons of emissions The third study by BSF. Of course, we also want to comment on what does it look like in terms of mechanical recycling? Is it competitive? Is it complementary? Our point of view is it's complementary, but we'd like to understand what about the CO2 emissions if you compare this. The value chain. In our model, we have an average composition that we modeled for a yellow bag. Once you have the yellow bag, after sorting, you can incinerate the contents as mixed plastic waste. You can also mechanically recycle it. Uh, so we are talking about the mixed fractions here in our model or you use pyrolysis in order to produce new plastic material. In incineration, we used a number of different representative incineration technologies that is uh, municipal waste incineration and also power plants, SRF power plants, because they use high calorific raw materials which are interesting for pyrolysis and mechanical recycling. In terms of mechanical recycling the result is a plastic which can no longer reach virgin grade and this is why the material credit is not high but for virgin credit you can have a full credit. And we decided for this study, we will use a renowned method, widely renowned, which the European Commission developed, the so-called circular footprint form formula, where certain quality factors were introduced in order to quantify the comparison between virgin grade and non-virgin grade. And this is what we included in our calculation. Now let's take a look at the base case result. You see, looking at incineration, that there's no surprise, it causes higher CO2 emissions. Then you see pyrolysis with about 50% improvement. And you see mechanical recycling, which depending on specific influencing factors, loss of material and other factors can have higher or lower emissions. But in our base case, it's similar. In other words, I'd like to wrap this up now. In the first study, it turned out that in our model, 50% of CO2 emissions can be saved compared to incineration. This goes for Germany. And we were able to show that compared to the commercial production of plastic, primary plastic, CO2 emissions can be reduced. If you take a holistic view at the value chain, at the life cycle, and if you consider the incineration that was avoided and the third aspect is that compared to mechanical recycling we have similar CO2 emissions. They may be higher or lower depending on what 
the specific fraction loss is for mechanical recycling and what type of quality I have at the end of the mechanical recycling. That's for my presentation. And if there are questions, of course, I'm willing to answer them, Torsten. We have one interesting question coming from India, Ananda Seka. Product credits, if any, is handled in the LCR study with respect to pyrolysis process. Also, byproduct credits, if any, is handled in the LCA study with respect to pyrolysis process. Up the credits for by study compared to the pyrolysis for the LCA study because it's uh, as, as Carlos told us also it's below 10% uh, yeah it's the char fraction yes there is a credit given for that but we we have given a credit for uh, for gravel yeah so that's a that's a low um, um, performance let's say uh, application yeah and the credit is really not relevant yeah then have you noch eine nachfrage Robbie Vau from Germany has another question, goes into a different direction. In the classical market, if incineration of waste uh, is reduced volume-wise because chemical recycling, is it not that the lacking volumes are replaced by fossil fuels or fossil materials? So is, do we not have a situation where we then replace this by fossil fuels? Of course, you always run this risk, obviously. But in Germany, in the coal-fired power plants, uh, we um, still have RDFs, uh, high calorific fuels, and this will continue. We expect that we will have too much mixed waste of plastic, high calorific waste, which is looking for some kind of smart application. So we might have an excess uh, volume here rather than uh, not enough of it. Okay, we are not done yet. There is another question by Mareike Hoffmann in Germany. The third study is is this dealing with a poorly usable recyclable recyclable material and isn't mechanical recycling a contradiction to not using this type of material compared to chemical recycling let me repeat the third study is this dealing with poorly mechanically recyclable material if not isn't mechanical recyclability a contradiction to the goal of um, not using this type of material for chemical recycling. Well, we have um, included very good mixed plastic waste in our study. This is nothing that you would then recycle mechanically and you wait for a better utilization, chemical recycling or incineration. But we used material you do already recycle in the market, but we don't have enough customers. That's the problem. Why? Because the quality is not good enough to broadly introduce it. We do not want to have uh, fence pillars made of plastic. Some people want to have it made of metal and people don't want to use it in their garden. This is why I think this is an excess uh, offering that we have. And also the opportunity that you have to take a complementary approach here, that you have a recycled material and uh, maybe some mixed plastic fractions should be recycled mechanically. But what we incinerate today is supposed to be dealt with in a better way. And this can be done with uh, chemical recycling. So it's complementary. And if you take the complementary approach, you will be able to have better CO2 emission results compared to what I showed you in the study. Thank you very much. Please keep sending your questions via the chat. Here we just have time to answer the direct questions very briefly. So our discussion will take place after the break.